well. So we have to look, uh, take a look at the newspapers. And at the end of the day, we know that we have to do a review of what stories there are. Yeah. Mama, good morning to you. When we were not on air. No, I was not. Uh, <laughs> what were you well. saying? I was talking a lot about <laughs> many things. So, what do we have on the front page of the Air yeah, Menyasa? We have no many more. things on the front oh, page yes, of the Telegraphy. Yeah. Yes, Good morning to all of you. And um, <laughs> if it's your birthday today, please let us know. Get interactive on Facebook, join us on TV. The WhatsApp line that Mama you also have, but you promise is not yet active. No, it is actually. Tell us the number. It is. No, it's not readily in my head. But Patricia, <laughs> Patricia say should know. Patricia right. is the same old number. So yeah. So it's active. But make it text messaging. Yes. I just want I want to be sure if there's enough data on that. <laughs> yeah, so, so, we're, so we're back to the same issue, right? The data. <laughs> yeah, just data. Hey, just small data. Let's do the newspapers. Uh, we'll start off with the daily graphic newspaper. And on the front page of the graphic, trial of four former NCA bosses begins. They allegedly caused four million dollars financial loss to the state. Also, Kufu advises youth to take advantage of government initiatives. Some 553 senior high schools fail to submit returns to GES. We're going to start off with this story on page three, where this story that's making the banner uh, headline, the front page headline about these four other NCA uh, who are... Uh, you know, standing trial, if you like. Story by Mabel Akubanase in Accra says the trial of a former director general and three former board members of the National Communications Authority and a businessman accused of causing $4 million financial loss to the state will start on January 16, 2018. The former director general, William Matthew uh, Tete. Tevi and the former board members, Eugene Bafo Boni, Nano Usu, uh, and Sawen Al Haji Salifu, uh, Mimina Osman, and the businessman George Derek Opong have been accused of playing various roles leading to the loss of $4 million to the state. And if you continue to read, uh, the story will tell you about the charges, the hearing, thereafter, the bail, uh, a bit about the prosecution and the facts of the case. It's very detailed, by the way, in the Daily Graphic newspaper. I think yesterday there was a, a bit of why the case was being fast-tracked, if you like, or the choice of the words fast-track. So I'm sure you find all those unfolding stories uh, or story uh, embedded in this report in the Daily Graphic newspaper. Uh, let's do this one on the free SHS. That story is on page 23, still in the Daily Graphic uh, newspaper. So page 23. Uh, 398 out of the 620 senior high schools have failed to submit their returns on the funds released to them under the implementation of the free senior high school policy out of the 670 schools uh, 150 of them have so far submitted some of their returns on uniforms house dress and school cloth while the remaining 117 have submitted all their returns covering school uniforms house dress and school cloth surprisingly most of the popular senior high schools are yet to submit their returns what does it mean if they do not what does it mean if they have presented or submitted their returns. You can read about it. It comes with a picture of the Director General of the Ghana Education Service, Professor Kwesi Opoku Amaunkwa. Uh, there's also a story here about looking backward for sake of the future. Uh, it's, a, it's a piece that you might want to uh, read in the newspaper. A bit about what President, uh, former President Kufo has also been saying. That's also captured on page 16. Uh, it says, former President John Ajikum Kufo has advised the youth to take advantage of the various initiatives by the government to create wealth for themselves through entrepreneurship. He said the youth must believe in their ability to create a sustainable future for themselves instead of looking uh, or always looking up to the government to solve their problems. Quote, unfortunately, in our society, everybody is looking up to the government. If we want to go that way, I am afraid it will take a long time for us to get to the level that we want, on quotes. That's not all the former president had to say. It's all captured. But uh, he's also in the group photograph uh, with uh, a number of people, Dr. Matthew Apuku Premper, Mr. George Ander, who's on our show today, uh, and then a number of other people. That story is in the 
Daily Graphic newspaper. All right, so uh, back page of the graphic now. U.S. Aid presents teaching learning materials to GES for distribution to schools. And MOFA, that's the Ministry of Food and Agriculture, uh, responding to plights of rice farmers in the Volta region. That story is also well captured on the back page of the Daily Graphic newspaper. Mm. Ah, uh, from, so from that we do the Ghanaian Times. It has on the front page a story about three soldiers and uh, a policeman shot. And so this... Two soldiers and a policeman. I think that's what Ohiming... Okay. Um, We're told there's three soldiers by the Ghanaian time. So. Yeah. But uh, Ohimi may have been reporting too. Uh, by Fulani Hetman in Agogo. And, and yesterday morning, mm -hmm. uh, we, we went live to Agogo. Yeah. Uh, we're told that the wounded uh, personnel have been flown to a craft for further treatment. But there's there's seven military hospitals. Yeah. But there's an intriguing story that's emanating from uh, Tema. And apparently, the Tema Metropolitan Assembly, Mamavi, mm -hmm. uh, its chief executive. Uh, Felix Mensah Ni Anangla has banned dustbins in Tema. Dustbins, yeah. like, and his argument. What kind of dustbins? You know, in Tema, when you go there, they have uh, advantage points, various dustbins, so that just in case you're walking and uh, uh, you've just bought pure water or something, so that you don't litter the environment, mm -hmm. you don't. You, yeah. you just dump it there. But apparently, instead of people uh, making sure that their rubbish is collected or they, they get good vendors to collect their rubbish, they come and dump household waste oh. into the temporary dustbins. And so you constantly see them overflowing. Uh. And these are, maybe they are like the size or just a little yeah, smaller of I've the seen table. those bins. Yes, yeah, yeah. They're just for pedestrians, yeah. people who are walking yeah. around town. Very good. Very yeah. good. And so he says that he's banning them because Actually, households have become recalcitrant. This is indiscipline. Pure and you can say that get people there to stop them. But I tell you what, they will do this at night when yeah. they know nobody's Definitely. watching. And so his alternative yeah. um, to shame. the current situation is to ban them all together. You can't carry your refuse yeah. from, from home it is bad. and come and put it in, the, it in a bad. bin that is... Situated outside somewhere for for everybody else, you know, not and, for heavy. And, and if you look at the, like that. the class of people who live in Tema because they live in those uh, quarters and things, they yeah. should have been, you know, doing better. But you know, even uh, we have a poor attitude generally, whether we're educated or yeah, non-educated. Yeah. As for the discipline, a typical example is uh, you just have to take an, a look at the number of posh cars and the drivers yeah. who when they are getting through the toll gates of the motorway, or any toll gate actually, they, they litter yeah. with the tickets. They'll take the ticket and they'll just, and just dump litter. it right there. You see there. a nice yeah. Porsche. As for the indiscipline, say, yeah. it really doesn't matter the car that you're driving. Yeah. Or even the when, type of person When the church closes on Sunday, just exiting from the car park of the church, to the main road. Just look at the indiscipline. People who have gone to church, they've just closed yeah. from church. They don't want anybody to come in front of them. You know, they want to drive like they are out there. So as for the indiscipline, dear, whether educated, whether a church goer, whether you live in like the 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 plush, whatever, whatever, I think it's it's through our DNA now. Yeah. It's official. Yeah. Yeah. We're we're a bunch of indisciplined people. Mm. Mm -hmm. And apparently also uh, the tem uh, the Tamale area has witnessed a mob attack on the police and mm. uh, in the process uh, a vehicle has been vandalized. The story yeah. is on page 3. Okay. It says that um, uh, residents of um, Bulahogo in the Tamale metropolis of the northern region on Monday attacked some police personnel and uh, destroyed their duty vehicle. The attack occurred when the police went into a community to rescue a woman who was being collected, you no, know, molested by the youth in the area, who alleged she was a witch. Hmm. We're still doing that. Women are always the witches, not the men. It's not a fair society. Women cannot be the witches, and then the men... Not it's the interesting wizard. the women carry the children, don't they? Yeah. The women get pregnant. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, and they uh, carry and, the babies. And, and what even beats my mind is when an old woman is accused, or a, an age old woman or a middle aged woman is accused of being a witch by even his own, her own children. Yeah. After carrying you and nurturing you. Yeah. She didn't kill you then. Yeah. She waited for you, you to, to grow, grow up. up. 
to, yeah. be, to become a recalcitrant person, not listen yeah. to societal advice and become yeah. a deviant yeah. and, and, and wayward. Yeah. And, and when your life is not constructively constructed, <laughs> then you say that it's been caused by your mother. Yeah. And sometimes, many of the times, say, you find that it's the religious leaders who yeah. tend, the ones that, We've that, had this conversation that have before. littered or perforated our society yeah. We've had who, are, this who keep telling all these It's things. interesting how we want to even trust total strangers, somebody that you're not related mm. to, just because that person is a pastor mm. or is a prophet or mm. is a reverend, whatever, and the person who nurtured you, really. Mm. Mm. Sometimes it's not even because they, are, they, uh, they don't have their lives straightening up. It's also because now they are okay. They are really rich. And somebody is telling them if you, get, if you let your mother come close, you lose everything that you have. You know? <laughs> <laughs> on the back page of the Ghanaian Times, work on Nima drainage system at standstill. Hmm. Hmm. No comment. Then we have an uh, expedited negotiation with Messrs. The uh, FESA, NGO, urges Ghana Water Company Limited. You have a picture there of the Minister of Water Resources and Sanitation, Joseph Kofiada. All right. So those are the stories we yeah. have on Avi. You know the Agogo story? Mm. You know how things are quickly unfolding? Yes. So the district's police commander has mm. been transferred. Um, apparently there, there were some mistrust issues between... Uh, the district chief executive and then the and then the police commander yeah they because accusing they said him? they said there were some infiltrations if you like in leadership that's why they were not able to fight head on this hetzman issue and the disruptions that they've been causing so he's been but my effectively mommy, transferred I, I, at the heart yeah. of all this is because there are people who own the cattle who are big men and so sometimes mm tend to hold I reprieve for the Fulani headsmen. And at the same time, there are people who are big men, come from the area, or support mm. people in the area, and also tend to condone act or act perpetrated on the Fulani headsmen. Yeah. So I, I'm told that this, the situation cut from both ways. If you take a critical look at it, it's partly the fault of the Fulani headsmen and partly also the fault of the residents. I, I, I beg to Well, I think I got a, a lot more understanding mm. listen, listening to a, a very detailed conversation yesterday. It's not like they are saying we won't allow any cattle. They're saying that if you want to rear, just like if you have a poultry farm, you would have a, a piece of land. You need to have it in a company. And then area. You, buy, you buy the feed for, for the animals to feed on. You know, it has to be confined. You have to get a plot of land whatever it is and try and, to and make sure that it is well how do you get i mean if you have a farm if you have a farm if you have a poultry farm how you keep it and then buy the feed but you don't allow the animals to go and feed on other people's farms you don't have to be grazing so them. yeah exactly so if you want to you you just have to acquire land legally and then you know get that going but if you want to leave the animals like that there's a court injunction i think in, uh, there's a uh, uh, there's a uh, a decision by a court in 2012, which is supposed to be simply carried out, just get all of them off your land, you know, something like that. But I also, was it the minister, the Ashanti regional minister, or some, some, somebody like that, or the, the Ashanti regional police commander, somebody making a lot of sense yesterday on radio that I listened to. He said that, okay, so if you get them out, where are they going? Is it mm -hmm. the next the next community, you know, that kind of thing. So they're looking at it broadly. Except that even though it was a lot of sense he was making, it all sounds like some, something we've heard before, you know. But I guess we just have to give them uh, We need to find to some say. amicable resolution or solution yeah. to the current problem yeah. we have. Because yeah. uh, the Fulani headsmen don't own the cattle, mostly. They, they are... They are just headsmen for people who own it. Yeah. So. But I also disagree that people's farms should not be your feed. Yeah, true. People have toys. It's because um, we leave them to, to graze yeah. around. Yeah. Yes. We, we, Buy the I, feed I think, for them. I think in West Africa, don't we don't they have, have, as they have in Brazil, uh, elsewhere. Don't they, have, don't they have feed for, for those animals? Yes, they do. So why, why won't people just... Say Isika. Uh, How? Free, free graze. Yeah, those animals are expensive. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah. if you if you let's want them, the, if you want to do the Finder newspaper, front page of the Finder newspaper uh, from the Ghanaian Times, we move on to the Finder, and on the front page, 2076 perish in 2017. It includes 879 pedestrians 
Uh, that story on page two will definitely touch on a trial of NCA former officials to begin on January 16. Immigration defense, no refund of application fee. And the BBC has been feasting on this our story, uh, both online <laughs> and then on radio. <laughs> Haven't seen it on TV yet. Maybe they had it on TV as well. Which one? Uh, this uh, immigration <laughs> story. Uh, we need enterprising and creative youth to leapfrog poverty, ex-president Kufour. So another angle of that story, which was in the Daily Graphic newspaper. Uh, Elvis Dako in Accra says a total of 2,076 people. Okay, I don't mean the news is coming from him. He put this together. Uh, 2,076 <laughs> people died in road traffic accidents in 2017. This is uh, eight people less than the 2,084 people killed in 2016. And then there's a breakdown of the females killed, the males killed, pedestrians uh, killed, travelers injured, vehicles involved in an accident, types of motor vehicles involved. Essentially, it's a very detailed report that's put together. People uh, who were with us at the beginning of 2017, unfortunately, who have died through some, through, uh, some reckless means. Uh, and all that captured here in the newspaper. A uh, bit of the story on page five on the immigration story, and then we'll move on to another newspaper. Uh, so the Ghana Immigration Service has justified the non-refund of application fees of 36,062 applicants who bought recruitment e-vouchers but were rejected. A total of 83,539 vouchers were bought by applicants at the end of the sales. Out of this number, 47,477 applicants qualified. Uh, 1.8 million Ghana cities paid by disqualified applicants. The cost of this year's application e vouchers was 50 Ghana cities, which means that the service generated an amount of 1.8 uh, million Ghana cities from just the rejected 36. 1,062 applicants, uh, and the immigration service is saying they are not going to be refunding. Yeah, we didn't expect them to, but we need somebody to take uh, some kind of action. We've said it, we keep saying it over and over again. It's not fair that you're looking for 500 and you sell forms for over 83,000 people. That's just not fair. Roland. All right. No, we have to do the daily graphic and go online. Daily graphic or daily guide? Daily guide. Mm. Uh, we have on the front page, NCA, $4 million scandal, gang of five, trial begins. You have a picture there of uh, pre uh, President John Dejakum before exchanging pleasantries with South Korea after an event. And then we also have 7.7 um, million Ghana cities for a Kumfi, one D, one F, one district, one factory. Uh, this was uh, inaugurated long ago. It's now going to take home somewhere last year. Uh, we also have uh, 13 Gallum CS, get 39 years. But on the center spread of the news, one puller in the Daily Guide, we have I know gospel musicians who drink. Akosuye Japong, uh, she's featured, uh, quoted, or sourced for the story. Well, they are humans, aren't they? Okay, so we have gays shock BB Bright, uh, Mercy Johnson rubbishes divorce rumors. Oprah considers 2020 presidential bid. I'm not sure that she considered it. Well, um, it's you know her social partner, media. But her partner also said something uh, mm. that if the people wanted her, then she would. Something to that effect. Mm. So, yeah. The conservatives in America have not forgiven her at all. They've been, For what? They've been bashing her. For what? <laughs> That's, <laughs> that, that would be a Hollywood presidency. Oh, how? <laughs> I don't like handsome men. Uh, a story I attributed hey. to uh, Yvonne Okoro. So <laughs> please grab a copy. Oh, of but beauty still lies in the eyes of the beholder. Yeah, now. sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Mm. I, fi I find Mr. Bone handsome. You may not find him handsome, right? Yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah, he's handsome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now let's do. MyJoinOnline.com yeah. quickly. Please find out for Patricia if, he, if, if she has the number because uh, I have the Patricia, phone Patricia, do you have the number? Let yeah. us know. I already have a, a text message. I, I think that there, there are people who still oh, have that, that number. But that's the same line that we were using before. Right. So there's a message from Abraham in Koforidio. Abraham says, uh, it is the second time they're moving the police commander from the area in as many years with the same accusations. The problem should be looked at objectively and politicians should stop picking on the security service when they know the problem isn't from them. So Abraham in, 
uh, Kofodia speaking about this Agogo issue with wow. the headsman and the fact that the district well, police commander has been transferred. Well, we'll see. So we have other, we have stories on my door. Yeah, right? Professor Michael Quay writes, what is Republic Day in Ghana? So uh, it gives you a background. And listen, I think that when uh, Professor Reverend, can you say Reverend Professor? Because he's a Reverend Minister. Uh, when, he was, when he was appointed, named as the speaker, we knew that there was something that he wanted to leave behind because he's done, he's done everything. And what we need from him is a legacy, and he's absolutely doing that if you've been following the things that he's been doing. Now he's written this that is getting all of us talking and thinking, really. It kind that of makes, our republic makes a lot should of be saying, the fourth republic. Yeah. It should be the uh, beginning when we. Seven, seven January instead of the. Because really, that's when, when, there's, a, the, when there's change, when, when somebody is uh, voted in as president. That's when we make the change. That's, that, that's more reflective of. But you can read his piece and understand exactly where he's coming from. Okay, let's move on from Professor Mike Okwe's write up. Let's see other stories on myjohnline.com. UK born Ghanaian gets top education job in Theresa May's government. Sam Jima has been made Universities and Science Minister for England in Theresa May's government reshuffle. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I was going to say that we can tap some. Useful you know, lessons. Yeah, but, but this is Ghana, isn't it? We have Patrick Iwa and all these people coming, also coming from big, big places with lots of experience. What do we use them for? Nothing. Yeah, so. Uh, Jospon is a businessman worthy of emulating, according to former President Kufu. The CEO of Jospon Group of Companies uh, appears to be courting a lot of support and commendation from persons who matter the most in our society. I know that the argument has been uh, sometimes you have to separate the human being, the business that the person does, and you know some things that the person does that doesn't go really well, but it doesn't take away uh, from some of the, uh, the knowledge that they have. Uh, Mahama attributes seeming tension with Rollins to mood swings from a president. <laughs> Did he really say this? Former President Mahama has attributed seeming tensions between him and Mr. Rollins to the latter's mood swings. If he did say this, trust yeah. that there will be a response. And you were speaking <laughs> on uh, DTV's moment. Ah, uh, that one on one, eh? Okay. That was nice yesterday evening. Uh, you... yeah. So, what was that live or that was recorded and played back? Mm, I think it was recorded. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's an audio. We overlooked immigration exploitation in 2016, but not anymore. Koshiga suggests uh, that's a member of parliament <laughs> for Qatar. He says his committee overlooked the 100 <laughs> Ghana cities charged by the immigration service for its 2016 recruitment exercise because it was not an issue then. And it made a lot of sense, you know, when he was speaking. The fact that we didn't talk about it or we didn't, our attention was not drawn to that doesn't mean that now that's. This has got many people thinking, and we have become aware of it. We, we can't dig into it. Uh, but they're not, he's suggesting, they are not only going to look at this current one, but they're going to look at the previous monies that they've taken. But there will be others too. Well. The police service will come up, the military yeah. or the Ghana Armed Forces. Yeah. We're going to have SEPs. Yeah. I think that most Nursing often we're short-sighted. We're short-sighted. That's it. Because there are many universities, other... <laughs> there, are, there are thousands of people who yeah. buy university forms and yeah. don't get admitted. True. Help arrest medical stores fugitive. AG appeals to public. The Attorney General is seeking public support to use reasonable force if necessary to apprehend the fugitive behind the central medical stores fire. What do you want the public? What do you want us? to do if they have absconded or absent without leave if you cite have them. we really searched for them with all the listen sometimes you would see that they they are mounting like unannounced checks they are looking for particular things and it's amazing when our security services when they want to look or search for something eh, they will do it if they want to find you roland it doesn't matter where you are they can really be good when they want to yes yeah. Especially when it's one of their own. Yeah. They quickly yeah. calm down on it. Or when it's coming, when it's an Interpol situation or something of the sort. They're able to so, zoom uh, in. Yeah. 
in terms I don't of believe that we are looking for people and we can't find them. <laughs> I don't believe it. Let's move on. All right. Uh, Joy FM's Philip Nye, Mikaela, welcome royalty with a royal ceremony. Okay, who is now reporting on this? This was December 23, 2017, but the story is now up. Uh, you can take a look at the royalty baby. That's his name, by the way. His name is what? Royalty. Nice. Yeah. That's a Hollywood style name. <laughs> Decongestion should not be nigh day one, that former Accra mayor. No, no, uh, Matifio. Yeah, right. but, you know, Mr. Matifio, you know that this is likely going to be what you are thinking. The nine yeah. day wonder. Yeah. The <laughs> nine day wonder. All right, that's it for myjohnline.com. If you're interested in any of the stories that you've heard us review, all you have to do is to just uh, visit the website. And Human Rights Watch, oh, yep, Human Rights uh, Watch steps up. LGBT campaign petitions IGP for protection. Yesterday I saw a, uh, a press statement, the police issuing, was it a press statement or some kind of documents that the, the police has issued and they're given a hotline for LGBT persons who are abused or, you know, that kind of thing, to call that hotline. And yesterday somebody was, see if I can pull was watching us in the morning and said that uh, you said they should be identified. Yes. I said yes. And I even said on social media. That person is one? Yeah. Okay. I'm looking no, for somebody to have a conversation. The person okay. was just found it amusing. But I'm looking for somebody to have a conversation with on yeah. Friday on the show. So uh, if you're an LGBT you're... person, gay, lesbian, uh, which one is the other one? Q. Uh, Q. Queer. Which one's that? You're queer. Okay. LGBTQ. You're queer. That is, you're, you find yourself, either could you be here, but you don't shut that do this one. Yeah. Again. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, we, we, we want to hear from you. We you know, wanna, sometimes we there, are, there are people who uh, they behave like Kujo Besia or maybe tomboys, but they don't really do what they... Yeah. They, yeah. Okay. That's what Montagne is. So please, make yourself available. Send me a text message and let's get talking. You don't have to be on the show live. I can always meet you wherever. We can have a conversation. I won't show your face. Wanna. Don't worry. Uh, we'll so the, the message is coming through. Thank you, Patricia or Say, for putting up that number. Uh, but we, we're getting uh, lots of messages. This one says President Kufu should give us a break with his entrepreneur thing, mountain campaign platform, promising jobs. Why the U10 Nangtogma from Tamale South? Let's do CTFM. Okay, so we have a speaker's call for Republic. Uh, day date, a uh, Google tension, dissect to intensify action. Republic Day, speaker ignoring symbolism. Uh, and that's from Bernard Mona. Um, no, no, the day before, uh, the mm -hmm. one before. Okay. Which one is that? Uh, and then, you know, we're talking about Tetequashi, etc. Yeah. CTFM Online has gone to do some photo story yeah. about mismanaged spanner bus stop now open defecation area. Already it's all, it's a market. So, Rola, when are you doing the story? Do it for us on Friday. We'll try and say whether we have all the great time in the world to be able uh, to excuse do all the me? good things that we'll be See? able to do for you talk about the fantastic. Things. Go to the ground. That we have to cry and, and you know, tell her, because that's the roots that you use. You, you pass it every Charlie, day. Friday is the day we'll try. <laughs> we'll go and take cameras there. We'll go. Let's go to. But it will be good. It will be good if we have some time later to yeah. uh, to click and share the story with you. Wow. BBC. And uh, Zimbabwe is investigating Grace Mugabe's PhD. <laughs> the first <laughs> former first lady's doctorate was awarded just months of study <laughs> in 2014. So what are they going to do? Woman PhD, Dr. Grace Mugabe. At least she went to school for it. Yeah, only some few months. Yeah, yeah it doesn't do it matter. Any. There are people who don't go to school for a day. Yeah, that's true. And they still get the PhD. Right. And they use it. Like they end it. <laughs> All right. Let's read some messages. The changing of uh, Ghana history by the MPP to suit the Buzia family is confusing. Akoto Razak in Tamale, reading different meanings. But I think that, listen, let's read Professor Mike, 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 Michael Fay's uh, um, piece and let's get where he's coming from. Uh, the headsman thing, uh, you can't the owners of the cattle uh, come out. Okay, so can the owners of the cattle come out boldly to help deal with the issue? Well, there's one person that we know who also owns some cattle in the area. That's Alaji Grunsa. And he's been speaking. So he speaks a lot. So if you want people to come up. But what I heard 
the district was it district chief executive say is that as well Haji Gunza, he owns 500 of the cattle there are people who own thousands so he there yeah, he's not even the main deal but whatever decision they take includes him as well all right so we're done with the review this is a story that i listened to on the bbc uh, yesterday the focus on africa and i thought that it would be good to share so this gentleman is a boxer uh, he's a boxer his name is kelvin bilal fawas he was born in nigeria to a woman from benin no, mother from Benin and father Lebanese. Okay. And then uh, his, he said his father took him away from his mother because he was being more treated and then took him to his uncle. Father would visit once in a while, but at a point he ceased visiting. So his uncle relocated him, took him to the UK at the age of 14. And between that 14 and 18, uh, after, you know, he turned 18, uh, there were issues you know like if you want to go and live in the UK it's not easy like that uh, so they wouldn't give him benefits things like that blah 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 and then he started doing bad things not bad 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 things he said he would go to stations and go and write the, those graffiti things he would drive without a license or insurance it was so he got deviant. arrested he was a deviant exactly uh, got arrested but he had to survive because he was not on anything not on any benefits now, the UK government want to deport him to Nigeria. But the point is that he's not Nigerian. Uh, so he's essentially stateless. He applied for the Nigerians to take him. They bounced him. Uh, and then recently, he was, he was arrested, uh, put in detention, the immigration, whatever, whatever. And he's been released. But he's boxed. Let's go, let's, let's go back to the write-up. He's done stuff for the UK. <laughs> he's won competitions for the uk can we please go back to he's represented the uk he's before. represented the uk and at that okay. time he's not a so UK he's citizen. a uk based boxer who's now fighting for his right to remain in the country after the uk immigration uh, department decided to deport him or sent to the uk age 14 and abandoned oh let's uh -huh. so uh, Bilal is a current london amateur middleweight <laughs> boxing life holder and he said he couldn't go professional. Holder, yeah. He couldn't go professional. He got he could have signed a deal and made a lot of money and you know go uh, real professional, but because of his status, so he's stateless. I was just thinking, you know, if we share the story and we want him as Ghana, then you know we can just, Anna. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and yesterday when when uh, Bola. Mosher on the BBC had that interaction with him. There were lots of people who commented on this story. I'm sure if we were to click uh, the comment section, we'll get a lot more things that people are saying. Charlie, it's hard, though. It's hard. Can you imagine? And he's 27, is he? Mm. Yeah. And he went there when he was 14. There's no more an amateur, right? Well, he's well a in, the in, in the, the, in the, in the sense of, of boxing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. All right. It's... It's unbelievable. He says Very he's changed. Point. He's gone through a lot of phases. I mean, just like anybody else, no parental guidance, that kind of thing. So he's left alone. So all the other things he did was just to survive. And it was a phase that he went through, but he's an absolute uh, changed Change person, man. that kind of thing. I mean, he's a grown man now, so, yeah. Well, we wish him all the best, really. Yeah, really. We'll but he's, he has faith. You know, Bola asked if, he's, if he was uh, hopeful. And then he said, I have, I have a lot of faith. And I smile every day, even though I oh, have this uh, situation. Beautiful. And he's a man who is also usually depressed, you know. Ah, uh, he's depressed. So it means he, the has, depression, he suffers from some mental from, instability. For no, not don't put it that way. He's <laughs> mentally that way. insecure. That's it for us. Stay with us. Benedict is coming to flaunt Manchester City. Uh, they're on unstoppable team right now. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll that, be here with the latest sports stories. Yeah, he'll be here with the latest <laughs> sports stories. So stay with us. You're watching the AM show. Please keep your messages coming through. We'll be sharing all of those. <laughs>